In this video, we are going to learn a fast and simple way to connect any two lines together using the Albright knot. This knot can be used to connect braided line to monofilament or fluorocarbon line or any combination of those and can even be used for two lines of very different size. I'll also go over one situation where this knot shouldn't be used. So be sure to watch all the way to the end so you don't make that mistake. All right, so you'll get your two lines that you want to tie together. In this case, we have 50 pound monofilament line, leader line. And this high contrast line, which represents our braided line, I'll tie it again in a minute with regular strength braid so you can see what that looks like. So you take your leader line, give yourselves about four or five inches, and then fold it over on itself. And I like to kind of pinch where it's folded over so that it has some memory. It's a little bit easier to work with. Then what you'll do is take the tag end of your braided line and run it through the loop that you just created and then pull about 10 or 12 inches of tag end to work with. Now what you'll do is pinch your loop and take your braided line and run it to your fingers that are pinching your loop. Now you have all this set, you're ready to go ahead and bring everything in line and make your wraps. So you'll take your main line, kind of just make sure that it's in line with your loop. And then what you'll do is take your tag end and start creating wraps over all three of these lines together, like so. And as you make these wraps, they're all gonna be running in the same direction. So in this case, they're running to the right. And as I make those wraps, if I wanna adjust my fingers, kinda of grab the wraps as I go so that the loop doesn't move on me, that works well. But you can see what works for you as you tie the knot. So the number of wraps that you wanna make is gonna depend on the size of your line and a little bit on personal preference. Some people say seven to eight, some people say up to 20. I like somewhere in the realm of 10 to 12, but I would encourage you to kind of play around and see what works for you with your strength of line. So when you're done making your wraps, the very last step is to run your tag end through the loop and you wanna run it through the same direction that your main line is coming out of that loop, like so. So in this case, both are kind of coming out of the top of that loop. And I want to make sure they're in the same direction. Now I'll take those two lines and I can pinch the two leader lines and pull the slack out of the knot. Then before I pull it tight, I want to wet the line. Once the line is wet, I can pull all four lines together and then make sure they're all in line and then I can just grab the main line and the leader and give it a good solid pull and it'll cinch down on itself. And that's the knot. The very last step is to take your clippers, trim your tag ends. And in this case, you can trim very close to the leader line, which is one of the strengths of this knot that you don't have heavy leader line hanging out to snag on your eyelets. All right, so once more, this time we have our 30 pound braided line and we still have our 50 pound leader line. So I'm going to fold the leader line over on itself about four or five inches, kind of pinch where it folds. Then I will take my braided line and I'll run it up and through the loop that I just made. I'll pinch the loop and after I have about 10 or 12 inches or so of working braided tag end, I will pinch that as well right here. Then I will ensure first that my braided main line is in line with the loop. Then you can take your tag end and begin creating wraps around all three of those lines together, like so. And I almost just wrapped one of the wraps over on itself and that's something you don't wanna do. You wanna make sure each wrap is on the right side or if you're doing this the opposite way on the left side of the, of the wrap before it, um, so it doesn't bind. And again, you can take your fingers, kind of reposition them to make sure that everything stays pinched and is easy to work with as you're making your wraps. You'll feel it as you go. And the number of wraps you make is personal preference and depending on the size of your line, I would recommend somewhere between 10 and 12 wraps but see what works for you. Then you'll see what side your main line is running out of and you'll take your tag end and you will run it out that side of the loop as well. So in this case, 
the main line is running out of the top of the loop. So I will take my tag end and run it out of the top of the loop as well, like so. And then I will take both sides of the braided line and both sides of the leader line and begin to snug them up, pull them snug like so. And if you have a little bit of loop there on the left side, you can take the tag end uh, and cinch it down. Then what you'll do is wet the line. And while that's happening, if this video has been at all helpful to you, hitting that subscribe button really helps the channel and I appreciate it. Once the line is wet, you can pull all four lines together to kind of move the knot all the way down and cinch it up as much as it'll go. And then you can hold on to just the braided line or your main line and just the leader line and cinch it tight. And once it's tight, you can take your clippers, trim your tag ends. And again, one strength of this knot is you can trim the leader tag end very close to the knot and it should not hurt it. Now, here's a situation where you do not want to use this knot. If, for whatever reason, you need to connect braid to braid, this knot should be avoided. For example, if I need to add line to my spool, this knot might cause some problems because braid is very thin and doesn't have much memory, which makes wrapping around it quite difficult. To remedy this and learn the simplest way to tie braid to braid, click on this video here. And thanks a lot for watching.